Hello and welcome back. This is Dr. Jerry Cuomo in the tooth uh, full crown preparation design and number 30. Uh, crown preparation is, is uh, it's very, very step one, step two, step three type of procedure. So that being said, I'd like to, you know, just to show you the difference between where we started from. This is uh, tooth number 30, a non-prep tooth. And here we are with the occlusal reduction. And then finally, uh, our goal is to end up so that we have some form of vertical yet divergent or convergent walls. These are the axial walls on the sides, rounded line angles so that the cusps are not sharp. And also that there's a margin place that's uh, what we call a chamfer margin, and it's actually the half the, di di the uh, diameter of the tip of the burr. So I'm just going to draw a line to show you how that uh, comes out and tapers in. So you almost see this roll S kind of contour or reverse S kind of contour here. And uh, we talk about the three planes in class where you're You've got the gingival or cervical reduction, the mid portion of the tooth, and then, of course, the occlusal. So it's three planes and then rounding them. Just to show you the burr itself in relationship to the prep, um, I'll blow this up. And you'll see how the actual toe here is about half the diameter. And that's where you want to be all the way around the tooth. Now, I took the liberty of marking my... Um, my type of tooth. So our depth cuts are the same type. You want to concentrate on the toe going to the margin. Here I already marked where I want to go. Uh, if you do not have a type of at home and you're doing this procedure, um, you can measure it in class and just kind of get an idea that um, there's a certain number of millimeters, you know, from the cemento enamel junction. So I'm going to draw in that CEJ that I talked about. It's a landmark and its own, but not to confuse you, but just use it as a reference line. It's where the enamel meets the root of the tooth. Now the company has actually put a little indentation in there for you so you can see it. There it is. So you're going to be about a millimeter to half a millimeter above that on the facial and lingual, and then you're probably a good three, four, maybe even six millimeters above it here. So all, everything in this area is all going to be reduced all this portion. Alright, so let's get right to it. Again, I go to about four power on the handpiece, two clicks to the right, and turn my suction on. Again, and just want to start at the gingiva and just, I mean, for some of you, you can just go ahead and score it. In other words, what you could do is just score it a little bit. Let me get closer to my suction. There we go. So now if I lose the line, I, d I know exactly where I'm going. So let me make this. And in class, I mean, it's, it's good to use the microscope. It's, it's, and you can see things just like me. So again, just using the toe. Keep your burr now. You got to think just like you did in a class one and a class two. You want to keep it parallel with the long axis of the tooth. If you go off a little bit, don't worry about it. But um, I've seen students get caught undercutting this area, meaning creating uh, instead of a path of insertion an undercut. See, now these are just scored marks. These are nothing compared to what we're going to be doing. I'm just marking it just to save myself some time. 
Okay, and it's like a little hyperbola up and around the collar. Notice the wall dimension gets shorter in the inner prox. That's okay. I'm not worried about that. I'm looking more for uniformity. All right, now, look at that. And you know what? You could check this. If you're in class, just check it on your type of dot, just to make sure you're good to go. Or maybe retrace it out with a pencil. If you're at home using the system, uh, don't worry about it. You know, there's no type of dot to be checking with. We are going to check later on the occlusal reduction after we finish the preparation. We'll make sure we have the right thickness of reduction. Okay, so again, depth cuts, real simple. We'll start on the lingual again. And I'm going to come in from straight down to the margin. And there's one depth cut. And go about half on the burr and then start to bring it in. Now of course it's you have to think three dimension on these vertical cuts. So there's gingival. There's mid portion of the tooth goes in a little bit and then of course more toward the occlusal table. And that's about the right dimension. So there's actually more reduction toward the, um, the occlusal portion and less toward the margin. So let's repeat that. Let's go to the buckle side. And then we'll follow the mesial buckle groove. Again, about halfway. That's good. And then a little bit more in, in the mid portion of the tooth, and then, of course, toward the buckle. You know, you want, uh, toward the occlusion, you want about 1.25 millimeters reduction. Now, the one thing you notice now, I'll turn my machine off, and what you are noticing is this distance between here and here is getting more narrow. And you're starting to roll these cusps toward the occlusion, we'll start to roll them. All right, so again, I scored, but most of that is undercut. Now I'm tapering it in. So you might want to drop another depth cut here, maybe one here, and then one in the inner prox. I'll stop at that point, and then I'll do the finish the reduction, come back down the third segment, and um, and put it on the type of dot and show you where we are. All right, so here we go. Next depth cuts. And I'm just copying now, just making my cut all the way to the scored margin. You can always deepen your margin later if you had to, but once it's done, it's done. You can't change it. You can't put it back. So that's why I advise just nice and easy. There's two right there. Let's go one more on this side. Again, to the scored area of the margin, that looks about right. We're going to do one inner proximal now. Halfway. Not much vertical height there. You can do another one here. Halfway. And if you push too hard, of course, you'll get a little burning of the typodont tooth. There's your next one. Almost like little cookie cutters here. All right. Now we want to connect those dots. So now you just start literally just wiping away and stay. Now you want to keep a good lock. See, I'm using my thumb and my grip is now a palm thumb. So I'm pressing with my thumbs, thumb to thumb. There's my buckle reduction. I'm going to turn the corner now. 
on the mesial buccal aspect. And now I'm starting to, what we use the term climb cut, I'm pulling it toward me versus a more traditional cutting, prepping away. Don't worry if you don't have perfect margins. We're just going to get our reduction done at this point. All right. Now, interproximal. Fairly easy. Not much to reduce. Once you do the depth cuts, the, it takes a lot less effort to prep a surface of the tooth. So if you feel like you can't prep a whole surface, just do a little mini, like a depth cut like that. And then stay in the long axis of the tooth. I can't help but continue to harp on that idea is uh, continue the long axis of the tooth. Uh, kind of drifting away from my suction a little bit here. As long as you're parallel with the long axis of the tooth, you're, you'll always be right. Because the, the angle of the burr, the actual taperness of the burr, will take care of the taperness that you're going to need. It's probably about a, I would imagine it's about a six degree taper. It's like the standard to the industry. Six degree, eight degree tapered. If you turn your burr this way, you're going to get a greater angle, and that's not what you want. So, now, I might be a little over-reduced here in this mesolingual, but I'm going to just start to round now the cusp height just a little, just rounding it a little bit. Okay, and I can now tell you that I've got half my tooth done, pretty much. So I'm going to go ahead and um, let you prepare the tooth, and then I'm going to prepare the other side, catch up to you on the next video to go over uh, clues of reduction to make sure we have everything right. So there's my margin, sloping, of course, through the interprox, just like a little roller coaster. And um, that's it. So this is Dr. Jerry Cuomo. I will catch you on the next segment. Keep practicing.